Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial. What we have, what we are here having is a DeVault electrischer beaver. An electric beaver. And the yard positively polluted with the carbohydrate foam. That shit grows on trees. We had to have a go at her. Well, gave her what I thought would be an uppity tiff. Turned out to be a hot supper. Uh, didn't quite shoot your last, but... <laughs> She had a hard go. Being as it was, we already broke the cardinal rule of tear down. So don't turn it on. Take it apart. Broke that one right half in two. I'm going to give you the, the rundown on this. She, uh, yeah, ain't too skookum. It's not for bucking up wood. It's not for heavy, heavy work. It is for light duty trimming trees, this, that, the other thing. The balance is a little bit off being uh, because the handle is so far back. And... The attachment point for the blade itself is real craptacular. Weeble wobbles all over the place because the affectation, the affectation is just a plastic ratchet. Mind you, she got plenty of power to pull long chips out of dirty old wood carcass, but the problem is the blade gets a little bit cattywampus and then, uh, or the bar rather, gets a little bit off kilter and she'll pull the chain right off the bar. Now being as I had this on a brand new battery all charged up and she only ran for about 10 minutes, it's not too good for hiking out in the bush with. Uh, ain't no fucking good at all actually, but you're hanging off your neighbor's eaves trough and they're the litigious type in a windstorm trying to uh, save a $50,000 roof job from getting stove in on a, on a branch falling, you know, your branch from your rotten old tree that needed to be pruned a few years ago this is the tool for you i gotta show you exactly what i mean here and apologies because i had intended to do this the regular way that is take it apart see if i could get her back together and then test it out but i got the old gas axe out the the, the two smoke infernal combustion two smoke uh, pooling as uh, so named because you keep a pooling and pooling and pooling and the fucking thing just don't shoot you know how so I grabbed this because I just had a wee short job to do. <laughs> That's what she says. And uh, yeah, tested her out. But here's, here's the major affectation of this thing. The, the major flaw, uh, it's packed right in there with schmoo. But this thing weeble wobbles something terrible because this is on a ratchet. Normally you get two bolts to crank this right down and they'd be proper bolts you'd need a tool so they've gone away from using the chainsaw tool now you just got one of these things and it's on a ratchet so you can't over torque it ostensibly good but that also means you can't over torque it so this thing let me put it back on I'll clean that up and we'll put it back on and I'll show you just how bad the thing weeble wobbles that's one fastener here it's three maybe 15 16 it's probably metric but right around 15 16 so we would think that would take about 10 foot pounds of torque you now on this guy you can see what actually clamps down there's a rubber maybe a nitrile rubber buna and a little bumper on there and that's the only thing really bearing on there this might might do something no there's nothing in there see there's a pin there so we'll put that on and you watch how much torque we can we, we should put roughly 10 foot-pounds on there and we might be almost close to that but you see that's all the clamping now at 10 foot-pounds on a 5 16th you get I don't know rule of thumb you might get 2,000 pounds of clamping but because we're on that rubber bushing and we're on I don't think we're getting 10 foot-pounds you can see here well, if I could ever get the Jesus thing going here. You see the weevil wobble on that cork stuffer? Just no fucking good at all. Closer, careful looking at this, we can see why now there is a torque uh, limiting mechanism. Because this plastique is what's retaining the blade. Yeah, this plastique now. It is quite stout. It's uh, PA6, so nylon. Glass fiber reinforced 15%. Very stiff, nice thick. Still though, it's plastique. So we want to make sure that we don't crack that. The way we do that is with this 
torque limiting mechanism. Well, this doesn't pop down. So these pop up and over or down and over these poles on here and they, they ratchet and you can hear that once you're too tight just like that okay so to juxtapose that here is a 100 percent chinesium infernal combustion two-spoke saw and we can see very much more stout on the affectation their affixation of the bar now it's plastique but it's got inserts and proper what do you call these nuts <laughs> so you actually need a tool but for torquing that on so you can really give it a while, make sure it doesn't weeble the wobble around so it's quite light duty in this mechanism not surprisingly the tensioning mechanism is as robust to match the clamping mechanism we'll have a look it's all internal in here some sort of worm gear makes that uh, the bar extend normally what you'd have is directly right in here you get a flathead screwdriver which is on your your tool and you tighten it up that way this is on a different kind of slider we'll have to have a look at that mechanism now taking the cover and bracketry off for this right angle uh, bevel drive this is a spur cut gear that's just a right angle drive you can see here uh, polished shaft through no bearing on there whatsoever just right in uh, the plastic housing some small acme thread look to be smaller than quarter inch let me see how that moves around but some fascinating engineering details and not fascinating in a good way just kind of a head scratcher as to why they would make it so chintzy when all they would need to do is make a couple changes and make this reasonably robust so we can see here when we're torquing this down there's going to be uh, axial thrust outwards and that's just retained in there looks to be by this uh, D shaft on this uh, metal injection molded part. So quite a bit of weeble wobble in there and that's a small gear so it can't take too much weeble wobble before it kind of strips out. The other side of that is you are relying or we are relying on this plastic housing not to move. Now we can see that moves quite a bit and it's fixed not through the center line of this shaft it, this this is cantilevered out so it makes it even less stiff if they had put a bolt hole here it, it would have made it quite a bit stiffer it would last longer before you started to get this jumping out of groove and, and stripping out now that is not a, a particularly uh, high use item but at the same time We've all seen Jacob's chucks that, you know, you strip that key out, no problem, and then the, the chuck is fuckered. So this is the same thing where if you're tweaking on this, you really want, you want to push on this, not just turn it. You want to push on this so that it doesn't bend and strip this gear up. More details here. Here's the oiling port for the bar couple of pins well locating pin which would normally be a, a stud that you could bolt down but in this case it's just a locating pin right injected molded into or rather the the casement was injected molded around this pin here's the the brake mechanism for safety as well there must be a switch on here that prevents it from running so if you have a kickback it would go in this direction I just oh it's already kicked back and then to reset it we open up this band brake and just put my hand over here in case something spring it sprung us. there we go it opens up the band brakes allows that to turn there's got to be a switch in here somewhere and we can see the amount of schmoo what collects in there so very likely after a while you'd need to get in there and clean that right out proper and we'll reset that just squint your eyes here there we go quite a big spring on there that would uh, take nothing at all to turn your eyeball into a mushy empty ball of schmoo 
Now, in order to split the casement, we gotta take all this spring and sprung and works out. Go ahead and engage your safety squints, turn your head and cough. Ah, I'm not getting a good feeling about this. I might even go get my Maglarsis. If your if your spider sense is tingling, for fuck's sakes, listen to it. Okay, how's this gonna? Okay. Okay. Now we might need need a little of this. Hmm. Spider sense, speaking of. Sometimes when you get a clutch or something like that or a flywheel, it's left hand thread. It's reverse thread. So don't give her too hard. Strip the fastener off. For fuck's sakes. Okay, took the band brake off and we see the clutch. Not a clutch. Not a clutch. This is just a brake drum. Big heavy brake drum and sprocket drive for the chain. You see all the, uh, there's no clutching required. It's just straight through to the brushless motor. There we go. Okay, we're in like same. Here's the battery bucket. Goes to a default switch with some potentiometer outputs as well as a big snubbing uh, diode here. It goes to the ESC or the, the motor controller, the brushless motor controller. Big beefy gearbox here for the, we can see it cogging over so we know for sure that's a brushless motor. Cute little thing here to prevent kinking in the lube line, in the, the bar oiler, they've added a little rib for her pleasure thing in there and that prevents it from kinking. That's actually a spring. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. You get the motor and gearbox dangling and the ESC with the motor controller. So this thing, it's all epoxy potted so you can't see any components. That's all encased in a thermoset plastic. There's no heat sinking visible. So this, uh, you know, this is doing all the switching for this motor. And the fact that there's no heat sinking, it, it doesn't seem like it's designed to last that long. Now, it might not create that much heat, but at the same time, if any heat there is, has to come through that thermoset plastic. That might be a special type of plastic what has good thermal conductivity, but at the same time, there's no aluminium fins, no, no heat sinking whatsoever. Over here we have a, a little uh, Nichicon capacitor coming off the back of the motor, maybe for noise suppression. There's something for voltage spikes, but the funny thing is you want this capacitor as close as possible. Right, possibly right on the board if you can get it, because these end up acting like antenna. So any high voltage uh, noise that you get is going to be blasting out of here through these big long leads. This nine inches. And this is kind of odd. It looks like a, a, maybe a LED indicator or maybe a low level switch. For the bar oil goes over here oh no that's the micro switch tiny little micro switch for the kickback arrestor so this thing will not run if uh, this is not reset so I want to have a look at the pumping mechanism for this it's not just gravity feed it seems to have a pump okay all right some big beefy gears here. That's a big beefy pinion, spur cut gear, and a big beefy bowl gear. 12 millimeter uh, width there, so lots of meat there. And we got uh, molybdenum disulfide grease. Doesn't look very high solids, but the molybdenum disulfide impregnates the pores in this metal which this is a powdered metal 
which would be centered together so it has some porosity in there tiny little pores on the surface which is the rough for uh, rolling friction now proper spur cut gear I had mistakenly said a while ago that there is sliding friction but a properly spur cut gear actually has no sliding friction it is all rolling friction because if you look at the gear at the tooth interface it actually rolls along and it doesn't slide along but at the same time if you have poor surface finish because of the way that these are made just just because they are a powder that's centered together then uh, you want something like a molybdenum disulfide which are platelets and uh, lowers the friction and it impregnates the, the metal itself so what is going on here oh I see okay so that that little cam there that big that big cam offset you see it's offset by a little bit that is what actuates the pumping mechanism in out in out and uh, that's what gives you your lubricating flow we can take that out maybe yeah just like that so spring out stroke and cam uh, pumping stroke rather spring inlet stroke and pumping now that has to go quite fast in order for anything to happen and we're not pumping any yeah oh we just got a drop there so that's how much flow you get it's non absolutely non adjustable a yeah, pretty big bearing on the front side of this assembly no sealing whatsoever so you're gonna get some some grease leaking out of there over time but it should sort of half ass self seal because those dead tree carcasses they get packed right in there and there is a fair bit of grease in there so you have you know you got a while to go before you're gonna leak all the grease out of there no Buna and uh, o-ring at all no kind of nothing for sealing as far as the motor we got to take this off and see what's we might be able to uh, yeah we'll take that off and see what's in there now looking at the motor field six pole uh, three phase motor is a brushless DC motor but it actually gets fed three phase uh, polyphase I see there's no epoxy on the windings themselves that's okay because it helps uh, keep these cooler you get better cooling if you don't slather these in epoxy and as long as they're not walking around on you you know you take some of these apart and the, the conductor itself is able to move wherever the hell it wants of course if something's moving it's fretting and you only have a limited lifetime on that insulative layer the interesting feature PPA uh, which is a it's like a nylon but I think they add more carbolic acid it makes it more resistant to um, temperature creep and stiffer at temperature of course you want nice and stiff at high temperature so that's a, a polyamid uh, thermoplastic resin in there glass fiber reinforced 30 percent so that's quite a skook of material normally we would see just a PA6 like a nylon but this is better at um, staying stiff in heat so that's a good thing the housing itself plastique uh, uh, yeah and then on the back side all of well let's have a look at the rotor here so on the rotor there are the poles one one two three four or maybe yeah four pole and this little guy is for the Hall effect sensors and that feeds back into the ESC so it knows the position of the rotor at any point in time and that way it can fire these correctly fire these poles correctly swap them around in polarity so the motor looks quite skookum it's big it's heavy that's what you like to see nothing weeble wobbling around big heat sinks here 
on the back so there might be some there might actually be some switching going on in here not just the Hall effect sensors because there's no heat sinking on here it leaves me to believe that maybe the MOSFETs what do the actual switching are on the motor which would help out because then you have airflow through the rotor here's the fan a little uh, duct uh, no uh, what do you call that snail shell or uh, yeah you see that's how we're getting air in and then blowing past the uh, these guys taking the fasteners out of this big heat sink heat spreader thing uh, unfortunately I can't pop this off because it's been soldered together we see there's some thermal compound here or thermal uh, gasket here and if you look at this you look at the inside here it looks like the Hall effect sensors would be around the periphery of this guy it doesn't make sense that they'd be way out here what does make sense sorry framing you fuck what does make sense is the MOSFETs for the actual switching of the power on here on, on these poles would be out here and then uh, heat sunk through there with the with the cooling fans I think that's what's going on this is then not any actual power switching it's just brain boxery so that's a better implementation quite a quite a big robust motor you can get a lot of power out of these brushless DC motors uh, in the palm of your hand I mean I'm talking tons and tons of power so as I said using the thing there was no lack of torque the problem was mechanically couldn't handle the torque it was putting out it would jump the chain out because the bar would weeble wobble across now we got to get on the gargler do the old jazz hands routine find ourselves a left hand bolt for this and you try and get this busted cock end out now as far as well this is a special usage case tool very interesting tool quick easy jobs it's perfect you don't gotta you know pull in and pull until you your shoulder gives out it's kind of nice that way you don't gotta start it up and there's no fumes or whatever so i see this working great for for busting up pallets in a shop you know you always got scrap dunnage and stuff to to bust up so you can sneak it into the garbage or bring it uh for a bonfire so something like that little branches you know are you going to be falling a tree with this and bucking it up no chance it's just not the tool for the job it's not going to replace your gas axe but what it will do is for quick easy jobs it's great now having a look at the internals we can see that the power the the, uh, the prime mover and the power transmission very robust quite skookum where it falls short is the bar and all of the stuff where the 200 pound gorilla meets the the tool it's just not built the way a regular saw would be built it's quite flimsy in the the way the bar is fixed the the tensioning device is quite flimsy so if in this would be great for a homeowner if and you're getting a higher E to do some work for you, she ain't gonna last because they don't give a fuck, right? You're gonna have to baby this thing if you want it to last. Got plenty of torque, as I said, because the motor, beefy. But the problem is the bar. The bar is all over the place. And then the, the tensioning, and you see, you, you can see it. This is the part, what's keeping everything together. This this and this what's it made out of plastique in defiance of progressive existential fuckery i'm going to use a left hand drill bit try and extract this 89 cent part what costs 29 doll hairs to ship to canada son of a diddly so the wait a second here left hand drill bit left hand thread i <laughs> uh two wrongs don't make a right but three rights make a left i gotta change this for a right hand drill bit do that <laughs> i'll be that was easier than i made it look 
All right, so we'll let these parts uh, sit on the healing bench for a goodly couple months till we forget where everything's at, and then uh, try and get her back together. I get a feeling uh, one of these weekends I'll make a left-handed fastener for that rather than spending the thirty bucks. Jesus, it's going to cost me to uh, to fix that. In the interim, thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.